Hey guys, Fat Man's here. Uh, I did a video a little while back on buying a used handgun, and today I wanted to talk about revolvers specifically. Um, you know, the usual stuff, you want to look over the general condition of it, see what it looks like. Uh, when I bought this one, it was had that crap on it, that uh, hydro dip. And once I got the hydro dip off, I saw all kinds of little imperfections that were hidden. There's some some dings up in the top of the frame there. So you want to watch for some of that stuff. You want to make sure it functions. This has been safety checked. Nothing in the cylinder. Speaking of the cylinder, you want to make sure that it operates correctly. You want to make sure it opens correctly. Uh, in this case, you push on this and you can push the cylinder out. Look down the chambers. The cylinder is where the chambers are on a revolver. You want to look at them, make sure everything's okay. You want to make sure your ejector works okay. And this will be different on a single action, but I'll get to those in a few minutes. You want to make sure that your cylinder locks up. Now it shouldn't there's going to be a little bit of play there, there shouldn't be much. And then also move it back and forth this way. There should be almost no play. And when you look at this, let's see, point of time. When you look at the gap here, you should not really be able to see much of a gap. There should only be a few thousandths between the cylinder and the barrel. Three to five thousandths, I think, is what they say. So there shouldn't really be much. Um, you want to make sure your trigger works okay. So you should be able to, this is a single action and double action. So I should be able to squeeze it off. Request permission before you dry fire. Now this one I know is giving me a fit. Because there is a thing in there that's getting stuck. And it's stuck pretty good right now. There we go. Um, this has my pointer again. It's called a transfer bar. And it's this thing right here. And when you pull the hammer back, let's see if I can get it to move. When I pull the trigger, there. See it moving? That's your transfer bar. Some guns don't have that. But that makes it safe to carry six rounds. A double action has such a long hard trigger pull that's safe to carry six rounds in it anyway. But that is, uh, you want to make sure that it works, that you can cock the hammer. A double action only revolver is going to have this spur removed. Or it won't even have a hammer. You'll see that it'll come back like this and it's all concealed. And that is for concealed carry. This was a police issue. This is the way they came. Similar to a Smith & Wesson Model 10, which was also a police type of gun. So that's your basic rundown of a typical single action, single action double action revolver. Um, make sure everything works. Make sure your ejector works. They're pretty simple guns. Um, so when you buy one, you can really put it through its paces real quick. Make sure everything works. This one is my Hawes Western Marshall, and this one is a single action only, which means you have to cock it every single time you want to fire it. This particular gun does not have a transfer bar, so it is not safe to carry six rounds in, and the, the thoughts behind that is the trigger pull is so light on a single action. that it's just crazy. This particular gun has to go, before you can rotate the cylinder, it has to go to half cock. Just two clicks, and if you, there's a total of four clicks there. So, two clicks is half cock, and then the cylinder will move only in one direction, but it'll move freely. You open your loading gate, this is where you load it. 
So you just roll it to your cylinder or your chamber and you load your round in there. Move to the next one, do the same. There are tricks to loading a single action revolver so that you, because you only carry five generally in this type of revolver. Um, just because it is, it does not have the transfer bar, so it's not safe to carry six. The transfer bar operates with the trigger, and when you pull the trigger, the transfer bar gets in the way of the firing pin, so that it gives that extra space. Otherwise, the hammer is cut differently, and there's no space there. So, on your single action, your ejection is accomplished here by this. This is your ejection rod, and you'll see it stick out there by the loading gate. Really the things that you want to look for mostly on a single action are condition. This one has issues and I know it has issues. This is polished aluminum because or whatever it is, I think it's aluminum, because I couldn't color it black. <laughs> you can't blue aluminum. So when I blued the rest of it, I could not blue that. The front sight that is an obvious issue. When I show you the other one, you'll see why. Uh, it's cut down. This had custom sights on it at one time. Don't know what kind they were. Don't know where they went. There isn't much I can do about it except make some sights, and I just haven't gotten around to making them yet. So, that's that one. And that's a 357. This is a, the Taurus was a 38 Special. The Hawes is a 357 Magnum. This is a Ruger Blackhawk, and it is a 41 Magnum, and you can see just how big that front sight is. So you know the one that was on the other one was cut down. This has an adjustable rear sight. This one has a transfer bar, and you can see how the hammer is cut, so that it has to hit that transfer bar in order to hit the firing pin. Same stuff applies. You want to look at general condition. This one has had rubber grips put on it, Packmeyer grips, and they're not fit properly, as you can see here, which is not a big deal. I can remove a little material in the right places and it'll fit. So, that's another, you know, and single actions are a very basic design. You can take the cylinder out, which I'll do. It's fairly easy. A um, little better look at the star on the back there that you used to cock it. That's where that hand comes in. I don't know if this will do it. Pause. The pause will show you because it's old. <laughs> you can see come up there. See how it comes up? That's what rotates your cylinder. So, in a nutshell, those are some of the things you look for. General, overall condition. You know, this one's pretty good, but I got an awesome, awesome price on it. It's a little holster wear, but uh, it's, it's nothing severe enough that uh, bothers me at all. Not even a little bit. Because, you know, I shoot my guns. That's what they're for, right? Um, and, you know, make sure it's going to be comfortable for you to use. The grips are kind of narrow on this for me. But I have, you know, I have short fingers, but I have big palms, which makes that a little uncomfortable for me. But the way it is here is a little more comfortable than the Haas. You see how far up that's cut. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. That's your Revolvers 101, what to look for when you're buying a used one. Um, stay safe. God bless. If you have any questions, feel free to include them in the comments or send me a personal message. If you like the videos, click the like button, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm not in this for the subs. <laughs> so y'all stay safe. God bless and have a great day.